Well, this is my third video on questions and answers. It's getting very popular now. Now, if you've got a question, please add it below in the comments, but can you keep it down to one? Because I'm already getting a backlog. We're already going up towards July now, but just keep it to one question, please. I will try and answer them. Now, don't forget, I'm only telling you where I'm from in the southeast of Spain. I'm in the Murphy region. I can't give you all the correct information. I only go on what I've seen and heard. And I always try and emphasize, if you're going to buy a property, or you're looking at property, or you're thinking about renting, or coming out, always, always seek legal advice first. Don't just jump into it. I've seen already on one of the Facebook forums that somebody had bought something off the internet, they'd gone over there, not very happy. Guys, you've got to come to Spain. Don't just think by uh, relying on my information that that's good enough. I always emphasize you've got to come and visit the area. Doesn't matter how fantastic the video is or the information, you've got to come and look yourself and then you know it's for you. Anyway, other than that, <laughs> enjoy the fit. Like I said before, try and keep it to one question and I'll catch you next time. Oh yeah, and keep watching. Well, welcome to June's questions and answer video. I'm going to start off straight away, let's get straight into it. It's by uh, Angel ZXC. <laughs> Number one's question. Right, please could you do a video on the care and upkeep of your pool? I can answer that straight away. Yes, I will bring out a video later this year on the upkeep of my pool. Now, I don't clean the pool myself, my wife does it. We do it ourselves. So answered first one now this is a group of questions now angels gone a bit too many questions there but i will try and answer most of them when we move to spain we intend to buy a property with a pool so we'd love to know how to care for the pool cleaning chemicals how often cost week month where to get equipment chemicals heating of the pool do you have a solar panel on the pool or does it heat itself and the cost and uh, the electricity and so on too many questions <laughs> but what I will say is I think when you move to Spain I think people got to realize you're not moving from one country to another because maybe the, the price of property is cheaper and you want to live cheaper I think you're moving well for me personally it's more to do with the lifestyle there would be no way back in the UK that I could afford my own property with a pool. That's that one out of the way. I'm moving here for the dream, really. Um, and when I first arrived there, the pool wasn't really at the top of my list, but once you start seeing properties with pool, I'm glad we got a property with a pool. I think some people, obviously still thinking about cost, they buy a property with a big piece of land and then later on, wish they had a pool. It's a big expense. You're probably talking 10 to 20 grand, depending on the size that you want the pool to be. So if you are looking at property, I would suggest get a property that's already got a pool. Right, the next thing is on that questions is, if you get a pool, you can get pool cleaners, obviously that takes a strain off you, but pool cleaners, especially where we are, this is, this is the other thing, it's difficult to me to explain to people the costs of things because Spain's a vast country and wherever you are in Spain, costs will be different. If I lived in the heart of Madrid, no doubt the cost of a cleaning a pool there would probably be about 100 euros, I don't know. But where we are, the costs start from about 40 euros a month, even right one up to 80 depending on the size of pool. A lot of these new properties, they call them pools. To me, I call them dip pools. They're probably about three foot wide and about eight foot long, but they class them as pools, but they still have to be clean. The chemicals. Now we go to the Chinese shop, um, or we go to actually to the supermarket to consume. 
Um, sometimes it's not so good buying the cheap stuff. There are places around um, in Maveron, even on campus, where you can buy mostly top grade cleaning stuff. I'm not going to go into the, the price of that, but it, obviously it's cheaper for you to do it yourselves. And to be quite honest, it's not that difficult, but I will be bringing out a video later on. Solar power. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know many people that have got that. Uh, you, you can get heating. I don't know many people who've got that. Um, that's obviously all to do with your budget. I mean, obviously, once you've got it, yeah, you can get out there. <laughs> so, hopefully, that's answered some of your questions, Angel. There's a lot of questions. Like I said before, it's all dependent on where you're going to live in Spain. Obviously, you want to move to campus, so that's fair enough. I can give you a rough idea. But... And it's also dependent on the size of the pool. Some pools are not just oblong shaped, some have got wiggly bits in them. So yeah, <laughs> good question. Hopefully I'll answer some of that anyway for you. Number two, Ian Robson. Listening to your commentary and thought quiet to me, do you write a script before, beforehand, have a script in mind or just sort of say what you see? <laughs> Ian, I'll just give you a, uh, that's all the questions that I've written down. I'll be honest, I've tried years ago to go by a script and I end up going over and over it about a thousand times. I know, I, if I say it word to word, it never works. So yeah, it just comes out of my mouth. Sometimes I get a bit carried away and I have to stop and do it again, but usually it's straight out. Yeah, what you get is what you see. <laughs> What you get is what you see, as I say. Um, hopefully that's answered your question. No, I've only got the, the questions there. I can't remember all the questions, so I'll write that down. I've got a fair idea, um, some of them, because some of these questions I've got on this month uh, are about property. Now, I, I'm just an ordinary guy. I, d I don't keep an eye on the price of property and what's going on around with property. I just listen to people. But what I've done this month, because obviously some people have asked some specific questions, I've actually gone to one of the local state agents and asked them, so to give them some idea. Anyway, that's what number three is going to be about. Mick Phillips. Okay, Mick Phillips. Have you seen an increase in property prices in general? Yes and no. <laughs> I, like I just said before that, I don't really bother looking at um, property because I don't need to because I own my own property. Uh, I know that obviously there's property around up for sale and by chatting to a local state agent, there has been an increase and there has not. Um, I think what I've noticed here in Spain is a lot of people bought property a long time ago before the boom when prices were really high and when people want to sell their property, they're trying to sell it for the, the price they bought. They want to get the money back. Well, as you probably well know, there was a glut. Property just dropped, bottomed out. Um, and it's sort of gradually going up. The, over the past year, I've noticed that there is building going on. Um, and I was, I was talking to another friend of mine who lives over near Malmignor. She said she's definitely seen a, a price increase in property there. I suppose it all depends on what you're after, really. Obviously, newer property will have an increase, but I wouldn't say, no, there hasn't been no vast increase. Now, we've, we just had a, a new airport opened up. Um, some people did say, oh, that's going to put an increase on property, but I, I don't think it has, really. Um, there hasn't been a huge influx of flights coming in. So, no. Hopefully that's answered your question, Mick. Kate Campbell, I'm getting conflicting answers. Do you need security grills? The property we are buying doesn't have them. Now what she's on about is obviously insurance. As far as I know, that when our, the property that I own, some of the windows don't have grills on them. And the only reason they don't have grills on them is because the building's quite high up it's not like you can step off the road uh, up to the window, you, you, you need a ladder. Uh, and, for, and for that case, I told the insurance company, 
the, the height difference, they were quite happy. Obviously, the, the main doors were properly, uh, had proper locks on them, and obviously the, the windows that were accessible had grills on them. It, that's up to you, really. Um, we haven't put grills on the, the windows that are high up. The insurance company were happy about that. Obviously, we had to tell them. Um, I don't think that, you know, if you, if you say you've got no grills at all, I would imagine, because I'm getting confused now, <laughs> I would imagine if you got, because I can't see your property, obviously, but I would imagine what you're on about. If, if you bought a property and the windows are this height and they've got no grills on, then the insurance company are not going to be happy. You're going to pay a higher premium. And I'm surprised that they're even going to insure you if you've got no grills on. Because the thing you've got to think about, guys, is if you go away on holiday, you've got a good chance of being broken into. So e even without the insurance, I would still suggest getting uh, regers or security grills, as they call them there, on your windows and also uh, for your door as well. Because if, if you notice, you go around Spain, you will see nearly all property with this on. So... Yeah, I'm surprised that the insurance companies sort of debated that. If, it, if it's like this, I'm surprised that even they were going to insure you, you know, without them. Obviously, they would charge you a higher premium, but most wouldn't touch you like that. So I, would, I, I personally would suggest putting grills on there. So hopefully that's answered your question, Kate. We're going to move on now. <laughs> Back again. Right, number five by VFR800FI1, which, as, as I know, Frank... <laughs> right, I've, all, I've waited to ask this question for a while. You mentioned transferring money. Do people who move to Spain no transfer uh, their money into Spanish bank? How can a non-UK resident have a UK bank account? I think what you're getting at is, Frank, when I left the UK, I still kept my UK bank account open. Uh, one, I didn't know would I be staying here. There's always that chance, I'm, I'm, you know, I might have to go back. That was one of the reasons, and you can do that. I, before I left, obviously I told my bank what I'm up to. They were quite happy with that. Obviously they wanted to know the new address, because they've got to send out bank accounts. So you can still keep your uh, UK bank account open. Now, I don't know all bank accounts, all UK bank accounts, what, you know, what the, the, uh, the service is on that, but as far as I'm concerned, my bank lets me do that. I've had no problems. I've been out here three years now. Now, I can only presume the reason why I've still got my UK bank account open is because I've still got, obviously, got a UK passport, which I'm entitled to. Even though I'm not a resident anymore, I've become a, a Spanish resident now. Now, my mother, she moved to Spain over 30 years ago. Um, and when my father died, obviously she missed him. And she's gone back to the UK now, and she's gone straight back into the system. So just because <laughs> you go from one country to another, that doesn't mean, you know, that's it. They finished with you you're still entitled to being part of the UK. I paid my taxes all my life. I've done my bit for the country, <laughs> in case anybody's going to butt in on that. Um, but, yeah. So, you need to keep your UK bank account open. The other thing is, because obviously my private pensions are getting paid through it, I haven't got any savings in there now, but it's, it's just handy to have my UK bank account open. So... Don't think if anybody's coming out to Spain to live permanently or whatever, I'll just shut it all down. You need something there just in case. You, you can't say you never, you know, you're never going to go back. So, yeah, keep the bank account open. And it doesn't matter if you're not non-resident anymore. But obviously, if you get rid of your passport, that's a different thing. <laughs> so hopefully, Frank, that's answered your question. Number six, Carrie Osborne. We have bought in Campusel, but our villa does not have guttering. Would you recommend, due to the heavy rains in the winter, also what's up, 
What's up with all the graffiti in Spain? <laughs> I don't know, what, what graffiti? There's, there's not enough there. Um, yeah. I personally, I mean, thankfully our place, Bonnie, shh. I personally would have gutter in, because the place that we bought had gutter in. Um, obviously, you can't gutter the whole property, but it is a good idea because you mentioned about the heavy rain, because when it rains, it rains there, and obviously when that rain comes off the roof, um, it soaks into the ground, and if you've got a basement, you can get some major issues of that. So by collecting the rain and taking it out into the road, that solves that problem. So obviously if you can afford to put up guttering, you, you do, it's a good idea to, because I noticed some of these, we got a sunroof, and some of the uh, outlets on the sunroof go, why they do it? Right over the entrance of the door, so as they walk out the door, you get covered in water. So yeah, if you, if you can afford to get the guttering done, I don't know how much it costs, but get it done, yeah. Good idea, and once you've got the gutter in, especially up on the roof, make sure all the outlets are clear as well because they do tend to get blocked up every now and again. The graffiti. Now, I personally don't think um, I've seen a lot of it, but you're right, there, there has seemed to be a bit of an increase in graffiti, not around campus, though. I've noticed on the on the the RM3 as you go down towards uh, Maveron, the, the, the main road itself, there's always been graffiti there, but thankfully not around the actual uh, sectors. I don't know, I don't get it myself. I mean, I love the art side of it. It's, the reason I've come here today in the haunted hospital is there's supposed to be some sort of art gallery. Uh, I haven't found it yet. I don't know what they mean. Do they mean these? wall art things, but as far as I know, that they've been here already. But I'm still looking on that, but I think wherever you go, there's always gonna be graffiti. God, when I was back in the UK, it was everywhere. It, it's obviously, it's a, a young thing. I don't go around spraying. <laughs> it's a lot of money, isn't it? So hopefully that's answered your question, Kerry. Get the gutter in. I quite like the graffiti. Not the tagging, but I quite like the graffiti. Number seven, Richard King. Are there still good properties for sale on campus hold for around 2,000K? Now, I'll take it you're on about 2,000 uh, euros. <laughs> so I've actually had to go and ask the local estate agent, because I, I, like I said before, I don't particularly look at property now. I don't need to, because I own my own property. You know, I don't really need to look in the windows. So I asked him, and obviously he's going to say, yes, there's loads of properties around Crampus Hill for 200 grand. You didn't really say what sort of property you're after. If you're after a one-bedroom property, you got no problem. If you're after a two-bedroom property, you got no problem. If you're after a three-bedroom property, we're probably talking three-bedroom, two to three bathrooms as well might have a bit of a problem. <laughs> if you're after a four bedroom property, there's a good chance you could still get one of those as well. But the estate agent says to me, no problem. Like I've always said before, don't look on the internet. Don't look on the, um, I don't know, right move or whatever. Come over here and look yourself. Go in the estate agent, there's lo well, I wouldn't say there's loads, there's five of them on campus that I know of. You can pick up the leaflets. They're quite happy to, to take you around. Yeah, you've got no problem buying a property for that price, Richard. Okay, I'm gonna do one more, and then we're gonna move on. <laughs> no, I've got, you know, I've had quite a lot of questions this, this month, uh, and it's all, I've already gone into July, but I wanna get this done. Number eight, <laughs> Robbie Robertson, what are the requirements for residential and pre and post requirement for retirement? You, even you said it's a big question and it's probably on a lot of people's minds. And I'm gonna say straight away, Brit X. I call it the Brit X, whatever you wanna call it. It's, it's not caused problems, but it's made a lot of people go out and get residency. Um, and unfortunately, 
before we even come over, we did a bit of research on that, uh, and it scared us a little bit because you, you are supposed to have so much money in your bank account as, for savings. Well, we didn't. We spent ours, obviously, but doing the property up. Um, and now it's got, they're dragging it out to October. What I will say, every region, even every major town or city, has a different way of dealing with it, which is so annoying. But the basics is that when you first come out of Spain, you've got to get a padron. The padron is like putting on the lecture roll. I'm not going to go into all the technical terms on this stuff. You've got to get the padron first. Obviously, you need your NIE number. The NIE number is the most important, I think, because when we arrived here, we got the NIE number straight away because we needed to open up the Spanish bank account. We then bought a car. Now, our friends tried to do the same thing, and they said, sorry, you need a padron. So they, they, all, they got a padron. We didn't get a padron straight away. We waited a bit. When I asked my solicitor at the time, is it important? Does it make any difference if you're a resident or non-resident? And they actually said, and this is obviously before the Brex, um, they said, no, it doesn't make any difference at all, really. Now, we're all about tax. So I just took it for that word. So I, I didn't really bother. I know, you know, a lot of people say, oh, hang on a minute. You can only stay in Spain for three months or whatever. We're in Spain. <laughs> You got to be you got to be living here to understand the system. Anyway, so when the Brex did kick in and obviously things weren't going very well, we said right, okay, we're going to have to be a resident. So like I said before, you, you do need the padron, and it's going to be a, a quite a newish padron. You know, the padron does that's another rule. Some of them last a year, some last a free couple of months. It doesn't take much. You just go down to the town hall, you get your ticket, you pay. Pay you whatever, it's not much, and uh, you get your padron. Now, to become a resident, you can go various ways. I believe you can do it online, or you, you can use people that obviously can speak Spanish, translators, they do it as well. That's what we did. We used to translate. It's just, it's just so confusing. Well, to me, it was confusing. What you will need, you will need some sort of cover for your health. Now, if you're not Obviously, if state age, then you're going to need private health. Now, my wife works; she's self-employed, so I come under under the Spanish health system. But before that, we took out private health. If you take out private health, you don't just buy for the first month because they they caught on they caught on to that. You've got to have a whole year's upfront before you can become a resident. You've got to have all your correct paperwork. Um, so the health care is the most important. They obviously want to make sure that you have got uh, money to, uh, if thing goes, anything goes wrong. Now, this is where it gets confusing. Some places say you've got to have so much money in your bank account. We used our property as our guarantee. That was accepted. It's so bizarre. Another friend of mine, their health care was accepted on these icky card <laughs> on the national health card now that's not right but at that period it was this is what i'm saying now we know that once uh, the britx does kick in and whatever the whatever it is no deal whatever it sounds like they are toughening up on that so like i always say if you do anything legal like that always seek proper legal advice don't just take my word for it, because like I said before, it's so confusing, guys. You can buy the book. That's rubbish. When you go to these places, and they are really strict. If the paperwork is not correct, this is why you do need somebody. If the paperwork's not correct, um, they just throw it out, and you have to go and repay and do it again. Now, I've probably missed out something there, but as far as I'm concerned, the most important thing was your health care. Uh, obviously some guarantee of your money they're going to need statements from your bank I didn't do it so <laughs> as you can see I haven't done much research in your question but honestly it's is so confusing so once you get to Spain you want to get 
whoever deals with those sort of things gets to see them straight away and they'll put they'll tell you straight away what you're going to need to be to be a resident now you're obviously going to be a need to be a resident if we get kicked out of britx uh, because we're going to need eventually go on to the spanish state system once because once you become a resident now i don't know if this is true because i haven't done it myself yet but you've got to be a resident for a year where you there's a name for it that you can get onto the spanish health system depending on your age you you pay a, a, a sum and my dog's whinging again so we're going to move on so hopefully uh <laughs> lost the question now hopefully sorry hopefully robbie that's answered but we're going to move on now because the dog's getting bored here in one place but hopefully that's asked you uh some of it you, yeah, if you're moving to Spain now with the Brit X, you, you, you will definitely need to be a, a resident. Obviously, if you're only going to use it as a holiday home, then you'll only be staying there for so many months, and that'd be different. But with this Brit X, it, it's made things so much more difficult because we've had to obviously change our driving licenses to Spanish. There's a rumour going on about the Spanish driving licence that after the Brit X, that you might have to take a, a test. But thankfully we've, we've just done ours now we're just waiting for the the card to come back there's been a bit of a backlog as you can imagine here in spain a lot of brits are panicking um so yeah i hope that's answered some of it i know it's confusing but it's a difficult one to say straight away oh yeah you need this and this because you could go to the uh the place where they do it and they said no it's not right so robbie thank you very much for that question it's a difficult I'm going to move on now. Number number nine, Mick Phillips. Now I've got a feeling this has been said before in a previous question to do with number three. Would you say property prices are on the rise in your area? And I would say no, personally. And the only reason I say that is because I went to the local estate agent and asked him this question because like I said before, I don't bother really looking at the papers about price of property. I don't need to. But as far as I know, no, there are property around Campusol. Now we're obviously if we're talking about Campusol, are we? No, this is my area. As far as I know, I haven't seen a huge well if, if anything an increase is I, but we, I can safely say there hasn't been a drop in price, but I wouldn't say that there's been an increase in price. So, Mick, you're all right. Price of property, it's, you're probably going on about, because we had a new airport quite close by, it's only about 25 minutes away. Uh, obviously some of the agents will be pushing that and saying, yeah, that's what's pushing the price up. But I, I don't think personally, and from what he told me, that there's been no increase really, but it hasn't been a drop. So, thanks for that, Mick. Number 10. Mel Brownson, is rent to own a growing trend in Spain? Now I've noticed uh, over the past year or so, this thing, I've seen it on, especially on YouTube, I've never really understood it, so I went to, yet again, to the local stat agent, because I, another question I couldn't really answer really, I, I don't, you know, they, they do so many things to try and catch you to buy property, as far as I'm concerned, if you're moving from one country to another, it's best just to buy it outright. If you're younger and you've got a job, yeah, maybe take a mortgage. Mortgages seem to be quite good here in Spain. But, you know, the market's still very fragile here. But anyway, I asked him this question and he tried to explain to me, he, he said to me straight away, no, it's not, and he would find I didn't notice any of our local agents actually doing this rent to own, but he did say they do offer it to customers. I think what it is, what he was trying to get at to me, what I, the way I understood this was, if you're selling a property and no, you've got nobody interested, then you can offer this scheme. So it's quite good for the seller, whereas what it is, somebody wants to buy the property but they haven't got enough money, is you put 10% down of your money onto the property, you then agree uh, a termage of maybe two to three years. 
You agree, obviously, a monthly payment. Now, it's all done above board as well. It's all done properly with solicitors, everything like that. What he was telling me, the only downfall is that if, uh, if for some reason you don't like it, you can lose your deposit. And if you're paying 10% on something that's worth, you know, a huge amount of money, that can be a great loss. But, you know, I suppose it's another avenue. Now, I always suggest if when you're coming out to Spain to rent first, only because by doing that, if, you know, you, you might go on out for a weekend and see a place that you really love, and it's, everything's fine. And then when you actually start to live there, you've got a noisy neighbor, or you've got an airplane that flies over your head every day that's really low, and it starts to annoy you. At least if you're renting, you're not tidy or anything, and you can just move to another area. Or you might not even like living in Spain, you know, because of the temperatures, because it gets hot and it gets cold. So, no. Rent to own is not a trend. Maybe some of the uh, estate agents on the coast, where they're doing a lot of building again now, maybe they're using that more. But as far as I'm concerned, and what he was telling me, no, it's not a new trend. I think that's it. Yes, I've got through all the questions. <laughs> so, hope you enjoyed that. Like I said before, I'm only just an ordinary guy. I haven't got no skill on given legal advice. If you want anything illegal or anything about to do with properties, you really need to contact the right sort of people, you know. For anything legal, get get the right advice from them. And obviously for property, contact the estate agent. Now I know it's a nightmare with estate agents. You send them an email, most won't even bother. I've had a chat to them about this and they sort of admit that. You've actually got to come here, guys. <laughs> got to come here to Spain, look at the property and then go in and they'll sort you out. But if you just sit back in your home, wherever you are, expecting, my dog's whinging now. So, got to cut it short now. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, please keep it at one, guys. I've already got a load of questions <laughs> for July already, but just keep it at one question. I will get back to you in the next month as also as I say, keep watching, because you just don't know what I've got to bring out next. You don't want to miss something, and if you don't want to miss nothing, ring that bell. <laughs> anyway, have a great day. Keep watching, and uh, see you next time.